Like you read it over. right, this is the sunshine law. What it says, every motion has to be listed as a motion and the person who makes the motion and second the motion. Uh, these exactly. are not these are not on here. This, please. please. Uh, I have it right here. And I please read what it problem. says about official minutes. I make a motion that we turn down these minutes because they are not official. That is my motion. I know what disorderly is, and I want to tell you that, and this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me, that's all I got to say. I believe that there should be a skate park in Gordon for the local skaters. Because controversies that are going on between elected officials, controversies between elected officials and key employees <laughs> of the city. We would help the city, because the city has to have an audit. Okay? Uh, you're actually already late on your audit. Yes. You know, your, your prior year auditor, auditor also in the <coughs> audit report for 2013 had a finding which said uh, it was titled Controls Over Financial Statement for, uh, Presentation that city personnel do not currently possess the professional skills necessary to prepare and review year end financial statements. Not either. We had voted on it. Okay. I, I don't know anything about Mr. Holmes. Well, he was here prior to my coming. And they've got a handheld deal that just go to each one and read it on and off and punch it in, you know, by the household and the account number. But most of them, they, they know what to do. They do, too. When we have a lot of rain, and uh, especially if it's close to a street, especially if it's the sidewalk and the road, you know, and it runs off, it's going to fill up a meter. So they're used to digging, you know, down in and getting away. No reason why it's not so much, and I noticed you used the word bypass. It didn't bypass anybody because uh, when I contacted the regional commission, this is what uh, was suggested, and you all came up. So uh, with, with that being said, this is why you were called. And I think, if, and I don't know all there is to know, with me coming in, half of us don't know who they are. I mean, I had to come in and literally say, uh, with all these people that we have on staff, I know none of them. Uh, as far as who our contractors are, uh, John Holland, we're paying him, didn't know who he was until I had him come in and introduce himself. And he said that he got the job by just a telephone call from my superintendent. As of 28, that was Mr. Holland's last day. We don't have anybody right now. Miller, Georgia, uh, Miss Laura Mathis. <coughs> did say that she could get somebody in here in an emergency. And right now we need somebody to come in here. What did you do with your room?
Accept the minutes of the February 12th minutes. Right. Motion has been made and second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Our next discussion. Any discussion? <coughs> Do you have it? Yes, I had a. I did not say 
uh, on one of the pages that that was a threat, and they wrote it up that I was a threat, that I said that that was a threat. I did not say that that was a threat. Um, the other kind of person probably said it, but uh, that was not a threat. It was an opinion by one of the citizens. That's not the same. The next order of business is the February 16th. Do I have a motion to accept the <coughs> February 16th minutes? Madam Mayor, these yes. do not meet the legal requirements for a set of uh, minutes. They do not meet the legal requirements, so we cannot vote on them. I mean, these uh, minutes, have you all had a chance to look at them and review them? Because this is a... Uh, 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 according to the standard minutes, this is a summary. Uh, I'm saying, I'm saying this is, we are adopting we are, the official minutes. Exactly. Right? These are the official minutes. And mm -hmm. let's not, because with all of that, I'd like you to read no right. this is the Sunshine Law. What it says, every motion has to be listed as a motion and the person who makes the motion and second the motion. Uh, these, exactly. are not, these are not on here. This is for the open uh, meetings. As a matter of fact, in uh, paragraph A, sub it, paragraph A, and I'll read that. It says, a summary of the subjects acted on, and those members present at a meeting or any agency shall be written and made available to the public. Now read what it says about the minutes, this official is, minutes. This is what it's saying according read to. Read on down, please. Uh, if you will give me time, I will. But these are the minutes uh, pertaining to the minutes. Please read and, uh, and let me interject and say to you, we went to training in Forsyth, Georgia, that gave us an uh, outline that we no longer have to do the, sub, the standards, that it was acceptable just to accept the summary of the minutes. And, am I right, Councilwoman Whipple? It was said. So, I mean, maybe you just need to no, have Please it. let me read it, please. Uh, I have it right here. And I please can't, read what it says about official minutes. Uh, just calm down and I will. Please. Uh, certainly. The regular minutes of a meeting subject to this chapter shall be promptly recorded, which was done, and such records shall be open to public inspection once approved as official by the agency of its committee, but in no case later than immediately following its next regular meeting, provided, however, that nothing contained in this chapter, what chapter is that, shall prohibit the earlier release of minutes, whether approved by the agency or not. Such minutes shall, at a minimum, include the names of the members present, which is in the minutes, a description of each motion, which is true, or other proposals made, the identity of the persons making and seconding the motion or other proposal, and a record of all votes, which is the same. The name of each person voting for or against the proposal shall be recorded. It shall be presumed that the action taken was approved by each person in attendance unless the minutes reflect the name of the person voting against the proposal or abstaining. Can you show me where these two motions have the person who made the motion? Which one? I have a copy. Where are you, where where? Are you talking about? Where? Under budget resolution one and two. Item one and two. Well, if I may address, let me just say this. This is um, the problem. You know, I'm at City Hall by myself for almost a month now. So um, this is just a summary. This I started on verbatim minutes and they are not complete. Okay. But may I make a statement? Sure. You cannot adopt summary minutes as official minutes. You can present a summary three days after you have the regular meeting. But when you come to this meeting to adopt them as official they have to be voted on as official minutes only. There is nothing in, that I've seen, and even in the, as a matter of fact, I believe I have it. Um, I have it in the car, as a matter of fact. We didn't have a summary last, at the last meeting. So if that were the case, we didn't have anything to, uh, uh, to, to vote on. So we started with the summary, and uh, the clerk, this clerk has done a very fine job of summarizing the minutes, and uh, council is up to you all to accept this as they are written. You all have had opportunity to see that. They're not legal minutes. 
Do we ask Mr. Green to the attorney? No, we're not open for discussion. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we turn down these minutes because they are not official. That is my motion. We will not have anyone speaking out. Chief, <coughs> not from the audience. We are the one that's conducting business, not the audience. So if you either do your job or you let no, me I, 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 I know what disorderly is, Excuse and me. I want to tell you that, and this is not disorderly. If you got to do something to me, then you just have to do it to me. That's all I got to say. Uh, no, 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 no. I appreciate it, but hush. Council, what we will do is that we will need to go. Can I get a recommendation that we just adjourn? I offer a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Motion has been made to adjourn. Do I have a second? Sergeant Williams, will you please come up to the front? And have your seat right there. Thank you. Council, since you, you all heard the motion has been made, do I have a second? I second. To adjourn? No. That motion made. My motion was first, so it has to be addressed first. We've heard that the summary of the minutes uh, up for take have a vote to accept them as they are written. I'm going to turn them down. I, my motion was to turn these down. They're not legal. And Mr. Smallwood seconded the motion that I made. I didn't hear you. Did you make a motion to accept what he said? Uh, not to accept the minute, the summary. Uh, we will now take it to a vote. Aye. Aye. No. We don't have four votes. So we can't adopt and do anything. You just have to move on. We can move on. All right. We will now move into the mayor's notes. And I'd like to ask, uh, I spoke with a young gentleman uh, last week who had some concerns. The young people, as far as the city of Gordon is concerned, and his name is Thomas Kent. Are you available, Mr. Kent? Yes, sir. Mr. Dante Neal? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Louis Malaya, would you please come forward? Everywhere they've gone, and 
they've been turned away. So what you all have in place for these uh, young people, not only you are the voices for the young people in this community. We've got enough tax dollars coming in here, enough incentives that something should be in place for them and made available. It's totally, uh, and I commend you young men for being as brave as you are to be concerned enough about your town, to take an interest and want to see this. Is there anything else you'd like to see, young man, Mr. Majali, Mr. Neal, anything else? What about you, Mr. Kent? All right, well, thank you so much. I know we'll get to working on this and make this as a priority because you all are our best of interest. Thank you so much. Right. I'd just like to add, moving further along, that I, on February 25th, I um, spoke with uh, Ms. Laura Mathis at the Regional Commission regarding uh, water system and made her aware that we would um, please be advised that we will continue to utilize the services of Southern Water. All right. Next, I have a question about the, about the Southern Water. So what what are you saying since we had already voted to go to go to Georgia let them make the uh, we had voted well she she had discussed with me at a, in a in a discussion that um, he was um, certified and um, they didn't have a problem with that okay they do uh, she didn't the the commission did not because we had voted for it. Uh, let me read on this with the, we received with the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, EPD Division, and it says, Dear Mayor Lou, Whipple Lou, in accordance with the Georgia State Drinking Water Act of 1977, as passed by the Georgia General Assembly, and the rules for safe drinking water, a permit to operate the Gordon Water System, a public water system located in Wilkinson County, Georgia, has been issued by the EPD, Division and is hereby enclosed. <coughs> now, the specific conditions for operation of the water system are outlined in the pages. The rules for safe drinking water specify the number and frequency of chemical and microbiological samples that must be analyzed for your water system. The microbiological and chemical water sample must be analyzed by EPD's laboratory or any other commercial laboratory certified by the EPD. And if you participate in EPD's drinking water fee system, the watershed compliance program will schedule the chemical monitoring and uh, sample bottles with instructions for sample collection and shipping will be mailed to you as sampling is required. So if we did not contract with the EPD for these laboratory services, we're responsible for complying with all applicable monitoring schedules in the rooms for safe drinking water. <coughs> monitoring schedules and other water system information can be found online. And we, we, they urge us to become familiar with all applicable sections <coughs> of the rules for drink, safe drinking water, especially section 391-3-5-15 and section 391-3-5-32 public notification says remember that all bacteriological and chemical <coughs> samples, information and correspondence for this system that are submitted to EPD should be identified by the water system identification number WSID number 3190001. And we have the permit to operate a public water system. So that um, is available. So each of you will be receiving a copy. So what are we going to do? What are we? What what copy are we going to? Because the council did vote to let uh, Little Georgia uh, in on this. All right. This is. Um, I'm going to address that, please. So just uh, be a little patient. 
I have another letter here from Middle Georgia Regional Commission. Dear Mayor, Mayor Hoopaloo, thank you for allowing the Middle Georgia Regional Commission to assist the city of Gordon with the preparation of the city's fiscal year 2015 budget. I'm pleased that the budget adoption was completed at the most recent city council meeting. If you have any questions concerning any of the budgets, do not hesitate to contact me by email or telephone number. As always, I and the Middle Georgia Regional Commission stand ready and eager to assist Gordon with any projects that might arise. Sincerely, Daniel Cummings. <coughs> and uh, next, I have, um, this is from the Paul Vincent Institute. Mayor Lou, City Clerk Tawana Brown. Prayer Mayor Lou's directive, I've uploaded the City of Gordon's 2015 budget provided to me by Daniel Cummings, Middle Georgia Regional Commission, via Carl Vincent Institute, and the website today of February 26, 2015. Thank you, Heather Halver. So, from the, um, she has confirmation from the Paul Vincent Institute, the budget document that you just submitted to the TED HB 122 system has been published. The details of the file you sent can be found fiscal year 2015. Government entity, city, Gordon. Document type is the budget report. And you all may review this document at ted.cbiog.uga.edu forward slash financial documents, note 7124. Thanks, Ted, HB 122-10. And just like to say that um, the RICO copier uh, agreement and resolution, um, Ms. Halbert scanned an email to Morris Farrell of RICO, uh, February 26, 2015. So all is well and we're waiting for that to, for them to swap the copiers. Next, the Federal Communications Commission, the following section 10C filing has been updated regarding the purpose of the new tower submission packet, and that notification date is 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 6, 2015, applicant Norfolk Southern Railroad Road Company, Consultant HRA Gray and Page LLC says positive train control filing subject to expedited treatment on the program comment no. Site name PTC West Gordon South 172.70. Detailed description of Project City of Gordon County Wilkinson State, Georgia. Georgia Historic Preservation Division. If you have any, um, for consultant contact information, you can contact James S. Huey, Title Senior Principal Investigator at 110 Abigail Street, Houston, Texas, 77006. Also, um, January 10th, I have a letter here stating that after further consideration, consideration um, Mr. Holland has given us some recommendations. And I'd like to say that uh, February 12th, uh, today's date, a call meeting took place at 6 p.m. at the Gordon Senate City Annex and uh, presented for security purposes were <coughs> Chief Mike Hall, Lieutenant Andy Hester, Officer John Jackson, and Lee Green previously, I personally requested to have Sergeant Tommy Williams as my personal bodyguard as I was expecting <laughs> him to present at the meeting. But he was removed apparently by Chief Hall without my authorization or knowledge. So throughout the meeting, members of the concerned citizens have been very disruptive and with malicious intent. I've directed Chief Hall to restore order. But as usual, he's very casual and has been very ineffective. Later, Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Hester has expressed support 
for the group who's causing disruption. So the meeting was subsequently adjourned. So during and after the meeting, two of the council members and myself have become fearful for our lives. We need to let you, know, you all know this. This is not a laughing matter. This is very serious. And also, uh, the letter has been submitted to the post to Ms. Judy Bailey regarding the Arbor Day award that Gordon has received. And just like to let you know that um, I've contacted BAP security and um, he stated that it will be April before he can get to us and we've already that's already been approved to have security there at City Hall. And we will let you know further details. Where is the uh, BM that? <coughs> That's already a done deal. It was back in some we months back, we, I think May before. We uh, not we'll have to go back and look at that. We've never voted on it. We've got to have bids, three bids. We've okay. already had that uh, council, and I will be part of it. I If not, I'll go back and get the minutes, and then okay. you will know. Yeah, so, like the as I said, uh, that's already been taken care of. Mm -hmm. I like the sleeve, please. They will be made available, too. <coughs> All right, I think that takes care of that. So um, next we have on um, <coughs> the old business is the uh, end court. And um, we've had, what was her name? <coughs> I believe it's Kathleen Miller. She came and presented to us, and uh, as a matter of fact, what's his name that came in today with the whole water? Mr. Edenfield has even stated that uh, he's with the city of uh, Swainsboro, Georgia, and uh, Ms. Miller has come and introduced to us uh, the in-court information with the new uh, government services technology and feels that uh, they can do us a good job for providing services uh, and software that permits government agencies to collect fines, fees, and taxes online with a credit or debit card program. And this is the resolution slash, I suppose, agreement. So if you all have had time to look at that, then you might want to take in consideration that we're moving up in the 21st century. Is that in our package today? Yes. I You've had it before, but uh, it's in your packages to put one in. I think everyone, if not, I have a copy. Be sure to get you one and you can um, There may have got, uh, as she said, where? Perhaps uh, in you all's boxes, but that's no problem. I stated just a few minutes ago, I touched base with the uh, water, and that's a, a real concern of ours with the EPD. And uh, is Mr. Lawrence, you want to come and tell us where we are with the water with uh, your response? Uh, basically, we're still right where we are because we've got to have resources to uh, address this. Uh, deficiencies as far as the well abandonment and um, the other issues, the smaller issues, as I stated before, um, we are handling the ones that um, my department are handled as far as the smaller issues. And what does but, that consist of? Um, the water leaks as at the well, we are fixing those, um, the ones that we can Um, and now also, that's up to the EPD standard. <coughs> well, when I said we fix leaks, it was leaking, and when we fix it, it don't be leaking. 
So, um, and other the small things as far as the erosion control, I got to get um, gravel ordered. And with the budget, I didn't know if we were uh, in line with ordering stuff. So anyway, that's that's where we are. Anybody have any questions for me? Let me ask you, do uh, y'all have a pressure washer that works pretty good? I know one of the things was that they had suggested, you know, pressure washing inside the buildings and repainting, you know, most of your piping that's not stainless, you know, and your building walls itself, you know, that was one of the small things that I thought you could do probably right. with your guys. Right. Uh, we do have a, a pressure washer, and, um, and the, we just haven't even got around to that part of it because we got to get it. The leaks fixed before we started the yeah. cosmetic stuff. The high cost that you were talking about or closing up the wells, that's approximately eight thousand dollars per well. We have one really old well that just sits out past number two well and then number one well downtown that we still call number one. I think it those yes. are two that so we did not appropriate any money in our budget this year to address you know, sixteen thousand dollar cost. So, you know, we pretty much have got a streamlined budget. There's only forty nine hundred dollars in it for you to do any repair work or anything. You only have forty nine hundred dollars. So, you know, if you go past forty nine hundred, then you have, you know, we we done went past the budget. You want to take a look at that? As a matter of fact, there's a one with the end court, the information. <laughs> okay, uh, take what it passes for you, you all's information. I have a question. Where are, where are these wells located? You have two on Millageville Road. Um, the main well is at number is at the water tower on Minnesota Road, right past the active <coughs> So right now they're not they're not in use. Yes. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, that, that's that's, that's the main one we use is what we call number three way. You say you got one on Minnesota Road? Or two? Two. Second one is right across from uh, Easy Living Trailer Park out of the field. But there's no water tower or anything. So you're not using that? Uh, sparingly. Uh, EPD uh, requires us to uh, use, it, use them as long as they're online. We have to uh, pump gallon of each month to uh, send them the report. So, so, so that's necessary then? Yes. Because I had some questions about, you know, about those wells. Mm -hmm. And I tried to call somebody to ask you, but at least you were here tonight and I didn't have In those recommendations, did they give you a time limit on any of them? I didn't see anything that said they were really imminent dangers that you had to do it within 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Do you know what kind of time frame we're working with? Uh, from my contact with uh, Ms. Tyler, who is over our district, um, that wasn't a uh, time. But I, I feel like there's going to be a time limit put on it in, in the near future. But uh, as of yet, uh, they hadn't put a as you correct some of the things, you know, then it would get less and less from yes. here, I guess. Yes. Now, are you talking about with the, the waste or with the water? Because uh, my understanding is that Ms. Tyler deals with the waste. Am I right or uh, correct me? I, I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, she deals with water. <coughs> She's water and wastewater. Because what's the date of May 15th that we've got to do? What is that uh, I haven't seen a, a date. I haven't, I haven't heard from Ms. Tyler since. Uh, the inspection. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, any further questions for Mr. For Superintendent Lawrence? Council. If not, then.
and thank you for that. We'll move right along to the new business. And I, I have a question. You made a statement about in your notes <coughs> section about being appointed a personal bodyguard. <laughs> Uh, we've gone beyond that, please. I'm, I'm moving well, on. Well, you've got some legal issues. Excuse me. Um, moving on to the uh, new business, we have <laughs> Clifton. The, the council wants uh, to hear about me. it. Uh, you're not the city attorney, so we need to move forward. Oh, yes, uh, yes, excuse me. Um, excuse me. Is Mr. Mark Partisan here? Come on down, please. Thank you. Hey, I'm Mark Hardison, Clifton Lifter Hardison Parker. Um, I, submitted, uh, I submitted a proposal. Did they? Does everybody have a time? I think so. Okay. I'm also going to, well, it should be one for each council member. Okay. I'm also going to hand out a little short handout. But basically, I was requested to, uh, or our firm was requested to submit a proposal for auditing services. So what, what we did is we obtained a copy of your 2013 audit report and looked at it and then I came down around the 1st of February and met with the city clerk, met with the mayor, and met with a couple of council members. And I expressed some concerns uh, about a number of things. First of all, governmental financial reporting has gotten extremely complicated over the last seven, eight, ten years and our standards have really changed. This handout that I pointed out briefly kind of talks about that. The first seven pages on this little handout here are from the Governmental Audit Quality Center. It talks about avoiding common audit deficiencies in Yellow Book reports. Yellow Book is the uh, government auditing standards and the city of Gordon is required to comply with that. So if you flip over about page three, and here's the, the numbers. Oh, oh, before you go further, right there, which you have it uh, highlighted or underlined, <coughs> it's failure to document the evaluation. Could you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, I am. I am. Okay. Okay, what this is, in all governmental audits, the auditor is required <laughs> to determine if the city has someone on staff or someone in the government, someone that can oversee the financial statements. In other words, can basically almost prepare those financial statements. Most governments this size do not have anybody on staff or, or elected official, any elected official, that really can oversee the auditor. And again, these are not our firm's rules, these are government auditing standards. And so this little bullet here that you're referring to is what an auditor has to do on every audit engagement, has to have management skills, knowledge, and experience to oversee non-audit services. And that's called the SKE in summary. If we flip over the next page, look down at the bottom. Again, these first seven slides are not my slides. These are straight off the government of quality center. If we look down at the last bullet on here, it talks about common <coughs> non audit services. The very first one is the preparation of the financial statements, in this case, the city's financial statements. Second one is the cash to approval conversions. Because a lot of cities uh, operate on a cash basis during the year, and then it's, everything gets uh, converted to the pool basis. The next slide on page five, uh, again, is just ongoing, talking about the documentation. And again, that's the auditor's responsibility. It's not the city's, it's, it's the external auditor of the city. Page six. Uh, elaborates a little more on what are non-audit services and again they're preparing your financial statements, bookkeeping services, reconciliations, and anything that's simply not a part of just doing the audit. The last page on this, this one that uh, is in blue here says, with no skill, uh, skills, knowledge, and experience, the auditor has no independence. Again, I'm emphasizing auditors, not the city. So what we did, again, is we, we came down, we looked at the report, and I pretty much immediately told the city clerk, the mayor, and a couple of council people that I met, that I was concerned, or our firm was concerned about a number of things at Gordon. Number one, the environment, the political environment, controversies that are going on. 
between elected officials, controversies between elected officials and key employees of the city. As an external auditor, and I, I do quite a number of audits every year and have been doing that for 34 years, that's a, a real issue for an auditor. So what I did is I, I recommended that the city engage two CPA firms. Okay? One CPA firm to prepare your financial statements, prepare the necessary statements, and basically be the liaison with your external auditor. And that's what the proposal that this board is proposing here is. And again, our firm would not submit an audit based upon everything that I've described. So we would not do that. However, we would help the city because the city has to have an audit. Okay? Uh, you're actually already late on your audit. You know, you've gotten an extension. The uh, annual audit is due six months after the end of your fiscal year and your September 30th year in. Uh, it's very common nowadays for governments, both large and small, to have two different CPA firms. And I'm emphasizing <coughs> CPA firms. Very few uh, accounting services that are out there, they're not going to have the knowledge of all the governmental standard requirements that are out here. And so, uh, so again, I feel it's that important. Your, your prior year auditor, auditor also in the <coughs> audit report for 2013 had a finding which said uh, it was titled Controls Over Financial Statement per, uh, Presentation that city personnel do not currently possess the professional skills necessary to prepare and review year-end financial statements in significant detail to detect material misstatements in, in the financial statements in the related notes. So you already have a finding in your audit report for 2013. So again, I'm familiar with the city. There's not much has changed as far as your fund accounting, your water fund, your general fund, and some of the other smaller funds since the last time we did the audit. <coughs> so what I'm doing is basically giving the city an option to, if you elect to um, accept our proposal, for our firm to prepare the financial statements, to prepare the entire notes to the financial statements, to prepare the necessary schedules to provide to whoever the external auditor is, whoever, whoever council mayor selects. And we'll basically be the liaison. Uh, I've got a price quoted in the very back of that. I got basically gave a range, which was... 85 to 10. Okay, 85 to 10. Um, in theory, this should help you cut down on your audit the cost, but that's going to depend on whoever the city selects. So I went through this very, very quickly. What questions do you have on me? All right, let me ask you. The, what you were recommending that your company, you wouldn't be doing the year-end audit, you would just, or would you no, do I, I would be preparing the year-end financial statements reports and basically handing them, this is your prior report, handing them to whoever the external auditor is and saying, here they are, here's the supporting schedule. Again, it's very, very common nowadays. I can name you quite a number, even on the very large governments. You know, some of the governments, they'll have CPAs on staff, and, you know, that won't be required. But city doesn't have any CPA. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has an accounting degree. I don't remember everything. Not so. Not this. This particular. And and, and most governments don't. So the world has really changed on governmental financial reporting. Exactly. And you know whether you elect to go with my proposal or not, you know it's fine with me either way. I'm just telling you that our firm would not prepare your audit without someone else preparing the financial statements and and. Uh, doing the role that we're suggesting here. If you did that much ahead of time and had all of that and handed it to an auditor that we, you know, did hire, do you think he would be able to do the year-end audit for a lot less cost than what you're telling us now? The reason I say that we've only got $11,550 total 
auditing money in our budget this year. Mm -hmm. That includes what you just said, plus paying someone for a year in audit. And then <coughs> once we get that, we've got to have an audit to it that's going to be in place for, you know, month to month to, until the end of the year, you know. Well, you don't actually have to have an auditor month to month. Okay. Your auditor, and, and that's part of the issue here, if, you, if, <coughs> if a government has someone that's coming down and is doing monthly work, then they should not be the external auditor. There's two different roles here, and you would have to, you know, clarify what, what someone would be coming down doing each month. Uh, bottom line, you're probably going to be over budget to answer your question. Uh, but with the environment, well, I understand. Here, I mean, I know we've got to do it. We don't have any in, choice. In addition to other things that um, I've learned, as far as potentially missing records or whatever, and I don't know what's correct and what's not. Again, that's why you need a separate CPA firm exactly. to pull together everything, because you don't want the auditor <coughs> to issue, you know, 20 findings, issue a disclaimer. The state of Georgia will accept a disclaimer of opinion, they'll, uh, they'll uh, accept a clean opinion, but they won't accept an adverse opinion. And if you've got records that are missing, more than likely you're going to have an adverse opinion or a disclaimer. So there's only two opinions out of the four opinions <coughs> that a CPA can issue. It's not uncommon for CPAs to issue disclaimers, but I don't think Gordon really wants to have a disclaimer. I, I know this is complicated. Okay. I, I know this so is that's why you're here to explain it to us. Yeah, and, that's, and that's, that's, why and that's what we need. And, uh, um, any other questions from any other council members? So what you are saying is that you, th you feel that we um, do need an accountant in it. Yeah, Clifton, Lifford, Hardison, and Parker would not submit a proposal to do your audit. That's how concerned we would be on our independence. And again, <coughs> everything falls on the auditor's perspective, not on the government. But if the state of Georgia, because they're listening, okay, they know what's going on. If the state of Georgia says we're not going to accept this audit, then you're going to be paying for two audits anyway. I've seen that happen. <laughs> And that's what you were saying. You wouldn't even accept it. <coughs> no, I would not. I would not be. I would not even submit a proposal just to do the audit. The proof. I think the bigger need is to have a CPA prepare your statement right. and be that that liaison so that you can get an audit complete. And again, I don't know what else has occurred in regards to your audit. And that's why we need you here to do that. And any other questions? Council? No, I, I don't have any. The only thing is we would probably need to let the uh, attorney, you know, uh, look over the proposal and everything. We wouldn't be able to vote on it tonight. But I, I, I've read a proposal. It sounds good. And what you say, it sounds real good, Ms. Martin. Okay. So what we're looking at then uh, is getting one, yeah, CPA part yes. of the, yes. And uh, two, two, please note that, as I stated to you all previously, that uh, this list came from Regional Commission, and I contacted the others, and uh, for right now, they are tied up. So the only two that are available is the two that are here. So uh, at the next meeting, we'll come with the recommendation of, uh, <coughs> to council, and they, you all will decide, and we will let you know. And thank you so much for coming. As always, you always do a thorough. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. sir. Uh, our next order of business is uh, GBT engineer, uh, Mr. Chris Hoje. You got it. You got it. Come on down. Thank you very much, man. Well, it didn't take me long to figure out when I drove up tonight that everybody wasn't here to hear about the water system. <laughs> but uh, appreciate y'all being here. Uh, I'm Chris Poget. I work with Ben Turnip Seed Engineers. And we do water and wastewater engineering for little towns all over Georgia. Uh, uh, excuse me for yes, interrupting, but did you give, do you have any information? I've got additional proposals. Yes, ma'am. Does anybody else have a copy of those? I don't. Oh, you know, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, so we, we do uh, water and wastewater municipal engineering for cities and counties and water authorities all over Georgia, including the city of Irvington, which is kind of how I uh, came across yeah, came across city of Gordon's path. So I also do some work with Mr. Mr. John Holland, who does water system operations for other communities that need engineering for. So kind of aware of... Uh, a little louder? I'm sorry. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, aware of some of the... Uh, uh, some of the circumstances here with the water system too. So, um, and I've also uh, worked extensively with a fellow who's from the city of Gordon, uh, Quentin Robinson, who runs the organization USDA yes. Rural Development. Uh, he actually brought us brought us into Irwinton, and I'll, I'll work with him and a handful of other communities right now too. So I know he'd be he'd be real glad to to try to help the uh, the city of Gordon also with uh, with your water system. Uh, the proposal. So in other I, words, he'll be able to get the grants on. Well, I won't make any commitments for him, but I can tell you uh, anecdotally what we've done in other communities. How about that? Uh, in Irwinton, when uh, when Mayor Joyner was still alive, we were meeting with her. They had some issues with their water system, and had gone through a number of contractors and engineers and projects, and just won't make any headway. So came in and met with them and talked kind of on a bigger scale. What do we need? Rather than putting band-aids on each little problem as we go, what do we need to do to make this water system good for the next 30 or 40 years? And uh, Mr. Robinson was there with us, and and uh, I think Mary Joyner at the time made the comment, you know, we don't even have enough money to figure out what's wrong. We just know it's wrong. And uh, that's when he brought up, well, we have something called a search grant, which I was not aware we had in Georgia before, but uh, it was his money. So he gave the, that community a grant, uh, gave our own to the grant, <laughs> we prepared a, uh, an engineering report, an environmental report. How much was that? Yeah. It was seventeen thousand five hundred dollars for a week. and that was a uh, comprehensive report on their system, their wells, their tanks. Uh, we actually put together maps showing where all their water lines were, kind of cobbled together everything. Spent a lot of time with uh, with their water system operator, <coughs> old, the old uh, uh, city council people, and people that have worked on the system before, trying to get all that institutional knowledge on paper and then did a hydraulic assessment anyhow. Uh, they're now at the point where uh, USDA is putting together a loan and grant uh, offering for them, they call that a letter of conditions. But to get to that process, uh, entities like USDA require a preliminary engineering report to be put together by a, by a registered engineer. And, uh, and the environmental, environmental report also, so you can uh, go through some of the other federal agencies to make sure that nothing that you're proposing is uh, uh, adverse to the environment. Anyway. So those two documents are prepared, and we kind of walk our communities through uh, through the application process and the engineering process that follows. Let me say also, we've got uh, just over 80 clients in the state of Georgia. Um, a lot of the clients that we started with in 1978 and following, once, once they're clients, we kind of stick with them. So we, we go through administrations, we go through water system operators, we're kind of, in, in a lot of these communities, we're the, the one constant as far as helping them with their water and the wastewater and the stormwater. So you understand where we come from kind of as a... Uh, so let me interject and ask yes, you, with the um, regional commission, so <coughs> Middle Georgia. We're working with Middle Georgia right now on a community development block grant application for Irwinton. And we've worked on that with other communities in the in the area too, but they don't have any engineers. Sometimes we help, uh, we uh, we work with them with regards to mapping. They do uh, GIS mapping services for folks, and they'll make that available to the communities at no cost. So you can get a base map going for your water system and those kind of things. Um, so what what I put on paper, it's, and the mayor's got our entire introduction and statement of qualifications. But what I put on paper for the council to evaluate is whether or not you would like us to, to do the same thing for Gordon as we've done for McIntyre and a, and a handful of others here in the last couple of years with this search plan, and that is do an assessment of your entire water system, meaning your water supply, all your wells, whatever issues you have with those, your distribution system, your storage, any kind of the treatment that you, uh, that you do at the wells. Have you seen our report from the EPD? I've seen the three-page letter that's got 31 points that need to be addressed. Yes. And so are you able to handle that? Well, we can certainly help with the response. There's a lot of a lot of those things are just maintenance things and housekeeping things that, yeah, we can, I mean, it sounds like we've got a, everybody's got a handle on that. Maybe now we just don't want a Band-Aid, you know. Well, I understand. I understand. This is uh, all about our 
life. It was a matter of life and death. Right. Um, it certainly can be. But so the, the engineering report and the environmental report, what we'll do in conjunction with that, um, and, and this is kind of a win-win situation, but what we'll do in conjunction with that is we'll also get the funding from USDA for it, to pay for it. So I understand probably none of this is budgeted either. So the, the fee that we would the fee that we would request for the engineering report and the environmental report, we would get a, uh, a grant from USDA for, for uh, the performance of those studies. And we wouldn't bill you or expect any payment until the grant's been received and we're finished with our work. So are you familiar with Cleve Edenfield with the Georgia rule water? I'm not only familiar with Mr. Edenfield in his role with Georgia rural water, but I'm also familiar with him as a councilman for Swainsboro, for right. whom we do all their engineering work. And his son, uh, <coughs> Kyle Edenfield, also works for a sister company of ours, J T Environmental. Yes, ma'am. So how would that tie in with, I mean, would that, because, I mean, I just saw well, he, it today. Yeah, I don't know he can that. always bring resources to bear. Um, they, uh, Georgia Rural Water provides great technical assistance for for items that go outside of our expertise. He's more of an operator. I'm more of an engineer. Uh, so what they do is, is uh, parallel, but we don't overlap much. Are you familiar with Iowa engineer that we have now, Ingram and Associates, Mr. Tim Ingram? I've heard of Mr. Ingram. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, he has been our engineer for several years. We had Carter and Sloop before him, and you, you're right. Once you usually get one, you keep them for a pretty long time, as long as they're doing, you know, the work that you asked them to do. Things we've been concentrating for the last eight, ten years on sewage upgrade. You know, and I know we've let our water go a little bit, you know, and we've got to do something with it now. But, you know, Mr. Ingram had done an excellent job, you know, spearheading all of those, you know, with $500,000 grant money that we got, you know, from the government to do those, you know. Yes. I mean, I was just wondering why we didn't give him an opportunity, you know, to that's, come That's in. a good question. And if you all are satisfied with your engineer, then I would suggest you continue to work with him. That's what we, we, would expect, we would expect that same courtesy. Sir. 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 You all came and just uh, followed what was given to me and recommended to me, so this is why uh, I asked you to come. That's, that's understood. Yeah, not, not trying to take food off man's head. No, I mean, I was just wondering, I mean, you know, Mr. Ingram has been a good engineer to us for many, many years. You know, we've done everything we've asked him to. We've never asked him to do this on the board, you know. And I was just wondering why, you know, man, I appreciate, you know, you tell us about this grant and everything, you know, so good information to have, you know. So in other words, with that, I, I feel if he's good at that, maybe the, the sewer, then you're good at the water. So we can have dual. You understand, because right now this is a, a pressing issue, and you might want to stress that. Um, right now, um, are you familiar with where this, the standing of Mr. Holling is, since he's going to remain with us? I am not uh, completely up to speed with the, what the status of his relationship is with the city. And I, I'm not either. We had voted on it, so okay. I, I don't know anything about Mr. Holling. Well, he was here prior to my coming. He didn't have an engagement letter, but he told me he was called and given the opportunity to come and, and be, uh, to, uh, you know, sign up on the water. Yes, ma'am. He did do that for sure. And so years. he said that he's willing to uh, stay on until, um, you know, we could get somebody. That's what he sent a letter back stating. I don't know if you all have that. I anymore. did. And the I had cost it. that I saw was $1,100 a month to start with. You know, you got to have somebody. So. We don't have. And I saw that too. We don't have the money. See, we, we operate, you know, our water fund as a proprietary fund, you know. We're supposed to be making enough money to put back and have some reserve funds. Right, right now, right. we owe we owe the water fund about 30-something, 30 $38,000, you know, that we owe the water fund, you know, from our regular city fund that we use water fund money to help us. You know, we, Where is we that? Got, because I haven't seen that. Those, those interfund transfers can be dangerous. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <coughs> and, and anyway, what I'm saying is you cannot use splash money for, you know, maintenance type issues, you know, like closing up a well. That wouldn't be a capital project. That would be a maintenance item, you know. 
some engineering fees can be covered under it, you know, so I, we would have to ask someone who specializes in the splash expenditures how far we could go, you know, covering some of the expenses, you know, with an engineer such as yourself, you know. One of the things that uh, you get out of not only our engineering report, but anybody that does a comprehensive report, uh, typically we'll take your water system budget and we'll analyze it several years back and several years forward, probably five years forward. Sure. So if there are a set of improvements that you do and there's costs associated with that, you want to be able to project all that out ahead of time, right? You want to figure out how much tower costs. We've been talking about it for eight, eight to nine years, you know, and we hadn't done it yet. Going up on our water and sewer break, we're way behind. Right. Well, a, a simple rate study can give you, rather than just kind of a, a dartboard toss of what your rates ought to be, a good rate study can give you a good indication of what your fixed expenses are, what your variable expenses are, and what your rates need to be yeah. to cover that. GMA.net has a very good, you know, uh, profile on their thing that does just exactly that. You can plug in all the numbers that you just mentioned, you know your population, your income in each uh, area. When you put all of that in there, you know, it helps you come up with the idea of exactly where you need to be, you know. I've given that information to our uh, deputy clerk, you know, to see if she could uh, come up with that, but I don't think we went that far yet. But I'm still, we need some expertise, we do. Y'all have any other questions or uh, Where's your office located? I've heard of the insurance. I know they moved oh, yes, sir. We're, we're right in state. Atlanta, Augusta, Henry County, and St. Simons. Okay. And we've got projects going on all around here. So, so uh, Mr. Turk, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Poge, are you suggesting that we up the water rate? No, 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 ma'am. I don't have to, not until I do a study. I don't have any information. Who's, who's, who's suggesting that we? I did. I have. For five or six years, I have done that. Okay, well, right now, I think we need to look at that study then. I think there's there's probably a basis for looking at all the numbers and seeing exactly what the rate should be. And, and, and if it, making and sure from that, that, then if it needs to go up, then, then by all means, but if it, you know. But you're a water, water payer, you want to make sure. Right. You see, the state EPD and the EPA, federal, have told us, you know, over time, you have got to account for your water use in this city up to a small percentage now, you know. And we had started a program of replacing our water meters. Our water meters are pretty old, you know. And we were going to start replacing, you know, maybe 200 of here. We've got around 850 in the city right now. Is that about right, Heather? How many? Yes, yes, okay. So we were going to, but we never did. We didn't. We got to start. And we may have replaced maybe 25 or 30. So we're way behind on that, you know. That's one of the simplest things we could do. And let me, and sometimes you can pull just a handful of those two and, and ship them off to get tested and see how accurate they are. Yes, sir. And we do all the time what we call green business case studies for GFA. They'll, they'll give you forgiveness on, on your loan to improve your water conservation. But you can figure out just based on, I mean, you might have 100 gallons going through a meter and the dial on the turn 70 gallons. Sure. Which is fine if, you, if it's your house. Right. But if you're the city pumping the water to it, then there's 30 gallons going through there that didn't get, uh, didn't get properly billed. So if you can get a handle on that number just based on five and then and extrapolate that out over the whole community, you might end up finding that the meter pays for itself. Sure. Well, how do you uh, determine one that's underwater? You're able to read that. Is that included in that that you all were talking about too? Because I've heard some. If the meter's the, underwater, the water's was... running under under the where they read the meter or whatever. Mm -hmm. My understanding. Now, we've had one uh, of some citizens come in and say, "How in the world could they determine how much water they use when the meter's covered with water?" And we, uh, <coughs> well, I know we've got a lot of communities in South Georgia down near the swamp that their meter readers complain that their meter boxes fill up with water. And those poor guys have to hand pump it out so they can read it. If you've got radio read meters or touch read meters, then you just you know access it from outside. So you don't have to worry about seeing the register. But, uh, we still do manual reading. They got a handheld deal that just go to each one and read it on and off and punch it in. You know by the household and the account number. But most of them, they they know what to do. They do too. When we have a lot of rain and uh, especially if it's close to a street, especially for the sidewalk and the road. You know, when it runs off, it's going to fill up a meter. So they're used to digging, you know, down in and getting the water out. It takes a little longer. 
you know, well, they do it. But that's uh, that's what we do. I'm glad to hear you have an engineer that you're that you're happy with. And well, I just wondered. I mean, I just wondered, you know, why we bypass ten to get to you without giving him a chance to talk about it, you know, to us, you know. No reason why. It's not so much, and I noticed you used the word bypass. It didn't bypass anybody because uh, when I contacted the regional commission, this is what uh, was suggested, and you all came up. So. Um, with, with that being said, this is why you were called. And I think, if, and I don't know all there is to know, with me coming in, half of us don't know who they are. I mean, I had to come in and literally say, uh, with all these people that we have on staff, I know none of them. Uh, as far as who our contractors are, uh, John Holland, we're paying him, didn't know who he was until I had him come in and introduce himself. And he said that he, got the job by just a telephone call from my superintendent to get the job done and now the uh, EPA has cited us with 31 uh, violations. violations. So I had to make contact with someone and so uh, with that being said, I contacted the um, regional commission and we met with them and uh, she said, well, uh, John Holland is already certified. And if he's already certified, I didn't know what to degree. And I said, well, look, we might need some more help. He said he does the, uh, his expertise is, is a little bit more, but he's willing to help us and stay with us. But he met with Mr. Uh, uh, Lawrence, and I think Mr. Lawrence has said that, uh, Mr. Lawrence, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, his services pretty much was no longer needed. And he said that's why he submitted his letter. And so we've got to have help because... At the time, he said, um, what was it, February 28th was his last day. And um, with that being said, he said he could do the job as long as he was he was paid and he could get us some help. So that's how you came about. Okay. All right. And so it's not overlooking anybody. It's just the real deal of the truth. <coughs> and like I said, with all of these consultant people, I have no idea who these people are, but we need to meet them. Council. We're a new council, and everybody needs to know who is who and who we're signing off and writing checks to. I mean, if you're going to be working for the city, you will be transparent, and the integrity goes in this. So we're not uh, we're not the council that don't want to know. We will be in the know. And uh, if you can help us, we'd be more delighted than to have you. Uh, it's not looking over uh, Ingram and Associates, but they told me their expertise area was in the sewage. So I know nothing about sewage, except now what they told me that they come in and line the pot. So hopefully nobody's having no issue. If they're that good, then we ought not ever have any more sewage problems. Thank you. Uh, but um, yeah, just to be clear, I don't, if if he's doing a good job for y'all, I don't want to take anybody's job. And, but if we can help you, our proposal's good. You, you call me anytime. So we've been around longer than just about anybody, and the way we're growing, I think we'll be here long after most. Just on, on that twenty-five thousand dollars grant, I mean, if we did, you know, contract with you to do it, you would get that grant first before you started doing anything, yes, depending on that yes, grant sir. to pay your, yes, you know, sir. people. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. I understand. I would, I would, everybody here is my witness. I Time frame. What are you looking at? We we're turning those grants around in two months, two and a half months, depending on federal government budget. <laughs> there is money available right now. I've already talked to the, uh, the area representative out of Sandersville, and she said she'd be happy to help. Uh, to help Gordon? To help Gordon. Okay. And uh, she'd be happy to help. She just needed to hear back from me after, after we talked. Sure. Um, and then it'll take us three or four months to get all the information together and get you a good report for I gave one of these to an operator over in Greenville, over in Meriwether County. We did a whole sewage system like this same. Uh, Quentin brought me in there, actually, and, uh, and I presented his, his program. But uh, when we were done with it, gave it to the operator, and he said, I've been working here 10 years, and I learned more about Greenville reading your report than I've learned in 10 years. So I think there's some value in, in what we provide you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Does anyone else? Yes. I have something to say. Um, um, Miller George, right now we don't have, we, right now as of the 28th, like I said this in the last meeting. As of the 28th, that was Mr. Holland's last day. We don't have anybody right now. Miller Georgia, uh, Miss Laura Mathis, did say that she could get somebody in here 
in an emergency. And right now we need somebody to come in here. I think we need to let Miller Georgia come on in here in an uh, emergency until we get somebody and just let them come on in and do what they do because we need to get somebody in here now. And until everything, until we can get a qualified person to come on in and do check the water samples or whatever y'all, whatever Mr. Holland was doing. I think we need to go ahead and let them do that because we already voted for Miller Georgia. We, the only thing we didn't do was we didn't follow up by sending them the paperwork. And I think we need to let them come on in and do it until we get somebody qualified. Uh, then we'll go from there with the engineers. If we're going to change engineers and not let little Georgia do it, then we need to probably be it out. That's, that's my problem. Uh, and you have not spoken with Mr. Holland. Is that what, is that what I understand? Not about his status with the city, no, no. Oh, okay. Oh. Because we do have a letter from Mr. Holland. Right, but I spoke with him uh, last, I think it was what, Friday? He said that... Um, he would be willing to stay on until the 13th of March. Yeah, but he gave us a lot of stipulations, too. Well, that's going to come with anybody yeah, else, too. we got to have a certain deadline. And so if we get this person to come on in with emergency, that can help with council. It's up yeah. to you all. It's you all state, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does anybody else have any suggestions? Mr. Lawrence, do you think we need somebody right now for the work? Do you have well, I, I had already spoken to, uh, uh, I've spoken to George. He was, he's actually going to sign off this month. So that'll be, that'll take us to samples for next month. I'm uh, scheduled to uh, take the test. Uh, this month. Uh, Georgia Rural Water, Mr. <coughs> Edenfield, told me today that he would be willing to uh, sign up on our papers. And Georgia Rural Water, they, they would do it for uh, a no charge in an emergency situation. And uh, Georgia who? Georgia Rural Water. But they're not through the regional commission. Okay. I think they did. I think they did. I think they did. Uh, George Rural Water. I think the commissioner, the regional commission, will did say something about it. I never heard that. I never heard his name. Before. I'm okay, saying, I'm not saying the, they did mention that George Rural Water could, like you were saying, that they could come on in and they would. I mean. Uh, And they could get somebody to sign off, like you said, I, you know. Yes, uh, I think that would probably be better than we don't want to have no conflict of interest in anything because we all know that uh, uh, Mr. William is running for city council. We don't want no conflict of interest. So I think that would be good if you would that be. I mean, just my thought, and I know it's got to go through council, is that George Rule of Water come in and, you know, in an emergency situation. Check out. Right. Uh, as far as the conflict, uh, this, and this just me, uh, because the election is the seventeenth, I do my samples this week. As far as my reports and everything. Well, he's, he's, so he's, not. he's not going to be elected. You know, I, I know that, that I, I know that that's when he's elected. But right now, we don't want to. You know, with the election race going on with the race going on we don't want to well, I, I wouldn't think that I you I know you might not and I might not but yeah. we don't know who else might will so that's what I'm saying okay council uh, moving further along can we uh, reach some kind of conclusion that uh, you all will <coughs> excluding Mr. Green because you said that's the council of the veterans so, is there any, anybody else? He said the Georgia Rural Water. They said they would come in and do it for free. That's what he said. Did you say for Yes, yes. 
take an interest in your streets and um, uh, I see over by the bridge um, the overhead bridge uh, pardon that's one of them that we need to check amen not only just check it but please make sure the litter is uh, clean 
Yeah. I, I think that's what you're saying, am I not? Yeah. Uh, we'd like to see uh, Gordon hometown look very good. Not just downtown, but outside, out on the streets, on the highway. Please, people, do not litter. And if you're caught littering, if there is an ordinance in place, am I right, former councilman? The state law in place on that. All right, we want to enforce that. <coughs> uh, there being no further discussion, I have the. Go ahead. While we're talking about what's going on in the city, <coughs> what they explain about and all that, I just want to comment on the, the job that they're doing on our streets and our parks, trying to keep all these potholes filled in forever. That's a never-ending job. You know, they're really, I mean, they fill up a hole seven, eight times, and they still won't stay there. So it's, it's, they're doing an effective job and they're trying to keep it. So, you know, they keep it up. All right. No further discussion. Do I entertain a motion that we can adjourn? I so move or second either one. I offer motion that we adjourn the meeting until Monday, March 16th, 2015 at 5.30 p.m. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Aye. 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 Aye.
Davis Bowl, Georgia. Dawson, Georgia. All this is what I'm doing is being drunk and annotated. People in Washington are looking at the in Atlanta. And so what I'm doing is here at my own house. But for a lot of people, and for the state of Georgia. Make right? Well, I hope so that everybody else can see it. And I guess on the internet, I get compliments as well as criticism. But we don't compliments on anything. Around the nation, around the nation, Canada. My, my best, the best comments and compliments I get is from Canada. <laughs> Look at this guy blaming me away. You know what? I like that. <laughs> I like that. 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 I like a lot of people call me. Same way in And see, people ask the same question. To me, that's, that, that's like a kindergarten question. To me. And when I say a kindergarten question, it's a kindergarten question because I answer this on my YouTube channel a lot. But when I get individuals to ask me this question, it's going to be so Because in a way, it really is. What's up, man? I'm not in the military. I don't know what I'm doing. But it's all good. It's all good. And I appreciate your comment, but you will never see me go down below, nor will I attack you if I'm not attacking you. I just thank God if you fall asleep, just hop some place to get out of the fleet. As long as he's deep, I can't get out of here. So you won't see me put a sign on and in the end, I'm going to have a way from justice. That will be the end. He will be the end. The Lord Jesus. Not us. You know what I'm saying to that? All things will be here. I have no comfort. I have no negative in my life. That's the way I will say. Peace be unto you. I still think you're meddling. I, I want you to, yeah, I appreciate that. But this being recorded, but you'll never hear me say that about anything that you say or anyone else ain't going. I've been called a lot of names. But me, I have a call. Me, yeah, look, look, look. You see, I don't, I don't want to get into this because I've done it before. But you know when Jesus wrote in Jerusalem, you know what they say he was doing? They say he was meddling. When Martin Luther King went to every place he went, you know what they say he was doing? That he, they say he was meddling. When Joshua was called to go and found the drug walls of Jericho, do you know what those people said? They said that he was meddling. When Esther and Mordecai went in there and Haman was against him, you know what they called them because they wanted to bring things to make it better? You know Haman what they, was wrong because he was again? jealous. Because I mean, I mean, he was I mean, jealous. <laughs> I haven't interrupted him one thing. And I won't interrupt him. Not because Mordecai was doing something for the country. He was doing something. How are you doing? Thank you, my beautiful brother. Hey. Thank you so much. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and you all hear these questions. You've heard them before, and you, that's just a continuation. And George Boss and I will continue to do what I do because it is the right thing to do. I just wish more Americans would do the same thing. Bye-bye. We go. This is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rines. We've seen in newspapers and television and on radio, everybody talking about Remembering Bloody Sunday in Selma. Bring range of views, emotions to bridge. Yes, across America, we hear about what happened at Edmund Pettus Bridge. Newspaper after newspaper highlights the President of the United States coming to this historic location. This flashed around the world. Even in LaGrange Daily News, we read about the Edmund Pettus Bridge and what happened there. People from around the world came to witness 
bloody Sunday. But the strange thing about all of this is that this happened many decades ago. But what about the Quitman 10 plus 2? Twelve outstanding citizens that were also dealing with voting rights. The state of Georgia brought these outstanding citizens up on alleged voter fraud. After four years, all charges were dropped. Lula Smart had two trials. The first one mistrial, second mistrial, the third trial, all charges were dropped. Many federal violations the state of Georgia accused them of. Yet where was these people during that historic suffering from 12 outstanding black African American citizens, 11 women and one male? Where were these people? Did they come to Brooks County? Did the SCLC, the NAACP, and others travel and support them financially? in their quest for justice by supporting attorney Shaveen King and others in that case? Yes, we had better wake up. And the people that traveled to the Edmund Pettus Bridge to be in the newspapers and on the front page, pages of history, it is easy, real easy, to journey to southern states to show what happened yesterday. But how many people are willing to come to the state of Georgia and support the newly elected black mayors in the state of Georgia that are being stripped from their powers, removed from office by superior court judges, taken into the courtrooms for nothing after being elected by a majority vote. Some of them have been given various criminal trespasses. Some of them, brothers and sisters, have been arrested and taken to jail and found guilty by Southern judges. And yet the newspapers in the local state and national level all ignore these mayors that are suffering without help from Georgia government officials. Even GMA, let me repeat, GMA, the ones who are supposed to train elected officials in the state of Georgia will not stand with the mayor in Meg's Georgia, Linda Harris, who's been arrested twice given a criminal trespass warnings. Both our brothers are arrested and taken to jail, given criminal trespass warnings, and banned from city council meeting where their sister is the mayor. Yet, nobody or a few people will come to their aid, but yet will travel to Selma about what happened yesterday. These mayors are not following the history of those of yesterday. They are the history makers. Where is MSNBC? Al Sharpton, 60 Minutes, 48 Hours, Datelines. When it come down to the new Selma of Gordon, George, and Mary Ann Whippaloo, who they are trying to drive out of office, all you have to do is Google Meg's Mayor Linda Harris or Gordon Mayor, Mayor Ann Whippaloo, or let's take it a step further, Lumpkin, Georgia, where Charles Gibson, a very young man from the black experience, was called a nigger by a sitting councilwoman, a white female, Debbie Stone, in Lumpkin, Georgia, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, and other top civil rights leaders, they have been informed through videos, and if they don't know about it, they should. The Reverend Jesse L. Jackson, we want to thank him for all the service that he's done over the years. But what if 
these people that found it necessary to travel to Selma and to show much, so much love and respect and honor for those of a bygone era. But these freedom fighters of this dispensation, newly elected black mayors in the state of Georgia, continue to suffer. Without any large outcry, CNN, ABC, CBS, collectively nobody will report. Nobody will sit these mayors down. Nobody will reach from the national level to look at the new Selma in the state of Georgia that is circumventing the power of the black vote. Do you not know that the equipment 10 plus 2 was found not guilty? All charges were dropped against them. And yet there was a court case that lasted 19 days in the Brooks County Courthouse. Let me repeat, 19 days in the Brooks County Courthouse. There was no ABC. There was no CBS. There was no Valdosta Daily Times. There was no equipment free press to tell the story. No newspaper. It was as if though a tree fell in the forest. And then they tell us that the forest does not exist when we had 12 outstanding citizens to be charged by the state of Georgia for alleged voter fraud. All because, many of us believe, all because for the first time in Brooks County history, blacks became a majority on the Brooks County Board, School Board of Education. The first time. And some did not like that, and they sought out to circumvent the voting process. And then, during the last election, these two black members of the school board was defeated in an election that, in my opinion, need to be redone. It needs to be redone because the GBI, the Secretary of State, and law enforcement, former school attorney, postal clerk, John Boone, and others, including Glenn Archie of the Secretary of State's office. There's a great possibility that they made statements that was untrue under oath, and all this can be obtained by a getting a copy of the transcript. We walked the street with Representative Tyrone Brooks, the late Senator Robert Brown, the Senate, late Senator Robert Brown, Senator David Lucas out of Macon. And so we're going to continue to talk about how we make mockery of our civil rights organizations or they make mockery of themselves by not supporting and standing up and walking around the new problems in our community. Why just focus on Selma of yesterday, but you can't focus on the Selma of this dispensation and what is going on? In my most humble opinion, I want to commend the people that travel to Selma. But at the same time, I wonder how many hypocrites was a man and among the crowd. How many hypocrites? were in and among the crowd of the trip to Selma. For if you go to Selma and support the workers and freedom fighters of yesterday, but would not stand with the equipment 10 plus 2, would not stand with the newly elected black mayors that are being run out of office, like such as in Warrington, with George Ivey, or with Mayor Chris Wright in Dawson, Georgia, that was six, shot six times, shot six times and left in his yard, and yet our civil rights organization, the NAACP, SCLC, and others, gave no long outcry. 
about what these people are going through. And let me repeat again, 19 days and not a single newspaper reported the beef of what took place in the case of Miss Lula Smart brought up on 15 to 20 or 30 or 40 charges. Many of them was felonies by the state of Georgia. We later found out that the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, the governor of the state of Georgia, Georgia Attorney General Sam Olins, the Department of Justice under Eric Holder, few seem interested in acquiring justice on behalf of the voters in Brooks County. Now, why would I make such a statement? It is because it has been documented for all the world to see. We, I'm talking about the civil rights leaders across this nation, put together and sent letters and videos to Eric Holder, the Justice Department, concerning equipment 10 plus 2 and what happened. And Tyrone Brooks, Representative Tyrone Brooks, tells me that Joseph Lowry signed off on it and other civil rights leaders across the United States of America and yet nothing happened. It seems as if though our civil rights organizations, we have it on record. The NAACP take $500,000 plus from Walmart stores incorporating perhaps other major corporations and therefore our civil rights organizations are losing their effectiveness and is leaving American citizens to beat the bushes for themselves. And so I don't recommend going out of your own community to try to prove that you care about civil and human rights. The question is what are you doing in your own community? What are you doing about the deaths at the hands of law enforcement? Did you travel to Valdosta when KJ was found dead, rolled up in a mat at Lowndes County High School? Did you stand up for the 14-year-old girl that was hogtied by a member of Lowndes County Sheriff's Department? face down for allegedly striking an educator. Then educators gave written statements that the student, black female, never struck an educator. Yet they went to, they went to court, lost their case. Those parents and that girl are suffering until this day, asking, where is the justice? So did you go to Valdosta to assist this mother? You went to Selma. Yeah, you went to Selma in mass numbers. You was in the crowd I'm with the president. You crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge. But did you cross the Georgia and Florida line, the Alabama and Georgia line, and come to the aid of that 14-year-old girl? And what about the get-to free press, George Boston Ryans? I have been under a criminal trespass from Lowndes County Sheriff Department for 21 months without justification or notification and I violated no law. All I did was report the news that others refused to report. Do you not know that even Sanford Bishop worker Michael Bryant had a gun pulled on him in front of Rose's restaurant in Quitman, Georgia? And do you not know that the news media would not even report what happened to him. I didn't hear nothing from Sanford Bishop. Nothing at all. We had better wake up, y'all. So when I went to the newspapers and asked them, what country are we living in? Are we living in Afghanistan, Iran, or Pakistan? And so they finally did a story about Michael Bryant having a gun pulled on him by a white Caucasian in Quitman, Georgia. But then again, it seems as if though we can travel to, to Selma and other locations, but when it comes down to traveling to where the people of this dispensation 
are living the real dream of Dr. King. They are not placating. They are not imitating. They are not duplicating. They are living the real dream. We look for Oprah's. We look for Tyler Perry. We look for those who are in the limelight who we thought was our quote unquote black leaders. We thought that we had certain blacks on TV stations that would come to the aid of the needs of the black community. And yet, we still are left without the voice of those who are in positions to tell the truth. But they are nowhere to be found. This is the Get To Free Press. I'm going to continue to do what I do because it must be done. And so I'm going to ask you to excuse me because many of you all ask me, did I go to Edmund Pettus Bridge? Let me say this to you. I may not have been to Edmund Pettus Bridge, but I have been to Morrisford Bridge. I may not have been in the crowd with the president and all these other big wheels, but when it come down to what I've mentioned to you plus, I have been there and I have tried to do my part because I know we cannot live on the struggle of those that lived yesterday. We must do something that will be a reflection of those who stood up and gave their lives yesterday so that we could breathe and our children could breathe. And so I'm going to leave you now, and I'm going to leave you in brief by saying, don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't live in the shadows of those that did what you refused to do today. Dr. King didn't just talk about George Washington Cobb and Booker T. Washington and other great leaders and what they did. Dr. King, like John Brown, like Noble Drew Ali and others, Reverend Jesse L. Jackson, they got up and they did something. They didn't just live in the shadows. They didn't just get on a bus. They didn't just get in a van. They didn't just get in their vehicle and took a vacation and took a vacation and say, I was there. I got pictures, I was there. But have you ever been called a nigger, as I was called on February the 6th in Gordon, Georgia, for standing up with the mayors that the black community in the United States of America could care less about? No CNN, no ABC, no CBS, no MSNBC, no Al Sharpton, just suffering black female mayors just black suffering black male mayors just two suffering white female mayors but it seemed as if though nobody cares until the big cameras roll out and the president or the vice president or some who was in the struggle of yesterday and received bruises they received bruises stand on the podium and speak. But what about those suffering men and women that served in the United States Armed Forces for all of our rights? And then we look around and our black leaders and the government says, good night, good night, good night, when we need them at this great hour. And so I'm gonna say to the black mayors, Mayor James Charles Brown III in Quitman, Mayor Linda Harris in Meigs, Mayor Charles Gibson in Lumpkin, Georgia, Mayor Chris Wright in Dawson, Georgia, Mayor Mayor Ann Whippleu in Gordon, Georgia, the mayor of Davisboro, Georgia. The mayor in Warrington, Georgia. 
Joy Jive, we say to you, I want to apologize on behalf of the civil rights organizations. I want to apologize for those who will travel to Selma, but they will not travel to your community. They will not publish one article about all of you that met with me in Macon, Georgia. I apologize for the newspapers who refuse to connect the dots to show that the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, and the Governor seems unconcerned about all the confusion that has taken place at public meetings across the state of Georgia. And they just sit and say and do nothing. Eric Holder of the Department of Justice was furnished several videos that I sent with the approval and the letters and signature of blacks from around the nation. And I'm not going to say, but I will ask Representative Tyrone Brooks to get with American, get with the American newspapers and see and publish what Eric Holder said about voting rights in the state of Georgia and what the equipment 10 plus 2 went through without help. But through it all, God made them victorious over their enemies. This is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm George Boston Rines. Please, black community, please, black news anchors, the few that we have that have not punked out under pressure, please understand that we are not who we claim to be, but who we prove ourselves to be over a given period of time. If you're a liar, time will tell. If you're a deceiver, time will tell. If you hate the color of your skin and the blackness of your kin, time will tell. But in the end, rest assured, with or without you, truth, right, and justice will win in the end. As it is written, so shall it be done. St. John 8.32 says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set and make you free. Well, to all the mayors that I've visited and those that have called me and I have not visited yet, I want to say to you, I have done about all I can do, and I still haven't done enough. But it is a disgrace. It is indeed a disgrace when we sit back and say we are concerned about voting rights and these black elected mayors these black elected mayors won the election and now the state of Georgia is circumventing them from carrying out the oath that they took under our formal government in the land of the free and the home of the brave they say Peace be unto you, the ghetto free press saying, have a nice day. And when will you travel to the state of Georgia in mass numbers as you travel to what the freedom fighter did yesterday at Edmund Pettus Bridge? When will you come to Georgia? The governor, the secretary of state, Georgia General Assembly, they are not standing with these mayors. These mayors are standing alone. And it is as though, it is as if though I, the ghetto free press, cannot get Victor Blackwell 60 minutes or 48 hours to live up to what have been written on paper that this nation was all about. That's freedom of the press, free speech, freedom of religion, and your right to vote. Again, the ghetto free press. Bye-bye. We go.